Our knowledge of Earth's place in the universe has advanced significantly as a result of the advent of the telescope. The first telescopes were made in the Netherlands in 1608, despite evidence suggesting that they existed as early as the late 16th century. Telescopes were developed independently by spectacle makers Jacob Metius, Hans Lippershey, and Zacharias Janssen. The history of Galileo's telescopic views serves as an example of how a device for observing and gathering data can fundamentally alter our perception of the universe. Welcome back to Cosmos Observer. Early telescopes were mostly used for Earth-based research. One of the few scientists who pointed telescopes upward was Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642. Galileo built his own telescope in 1609. The telescope was then put to use in Venice. He received a lifetime lectureship for his telescope demonstration. Following his initial accomplishment, Galileo concentrated on enhancing the tool. His first telescope, which was based on Dutch models, magnified objects by a factor of three. In other words, it gave the impression that objects were three times bigger than they actually were. He improved the telescope's architecture to create a device that could amplify eight times and finally 30 times. Galileo started observing his observations of the heavens soon after making his initial telescopic observations of them. He was eager to share his research, his views and observations of stars, the moon, planets, the sun, and the Venus's faces played a crucial role in helping us to understand the universe better. The earliest findings of Galileo's telescopic observations were published in the Starry's Messenger, Sidereus Nuncius, in March of 1610, and this brief astronomical treatise swiftly spread across learned societies. Galileo's expertly executed sketches served as a basis for his illustrations of the moon, which gave readers a vastly different understanding of the lunar surface. Galileo rapidly realized that the shadows he was just seeing were really mountains and craters thanks to his experience in Renaissance art and his grasp of the chiaroscuro, a method for blending light and dark shading technique. It is known that English scientist Thomas Harriot, 1560-1621, used a telescope to make the first known observations of the moon in July 1609, one month before Galileo. Furthermore, Harriot's moon map from 1612 or 1613 is much more thorough than Galileo's. Harriot was the first to observe the moon, and his maps contained more details, but he could not widely disseminate his findings. The Starry Messenger, however, sold more than 500 copies and cemented Galileo's reputation as an astronomer. He estimated their altitudes and depths based on his sketches. These observations made only feasible by the telescope's magnification strongly revealed that Aristotle's theory, or Dante's suggestion, that the moon is an everlasting pearl was incorrect. The moon would no longer be a flawless heavenly thing. It was now obvious that it shared numerous similarities with the Earth in terms of topology and characteristics. The possibility of life on the moon was raised by the idea that its topography was similar to that of the Earth. Galileo saw what he initially believed to be three previously undiscovered fixed stars when he shifted his telescope to study Jupiter. He quickly reached the conclusion that all these stars were actually orbiting Jupiter after further studies revealed that they had not been fixed. He has found three of Jupiter's biggest moons. The ramifications of this discovery that objects may orbit a planet led Galileo to make the case for a sun-centered universe. One of the main arguments against the Earth revolving around the sun was refuted by Jupiter's moons. Can the Earth drag the moon through the heavens, questioning opponents of Copernicus' sun-centered universe? This is a valid and significant query because, as we all know, the fundamental mechanism of gravity wasn't discovered till Newton's Principia Mathematica in 1687. The revelation that Jupiter plainly seems to have its own moons presented a straightforward rejection of a fundamental criticism of the heliocentric theory because there was a broad consensus that Jupiter was already moving. Simon Marius asserted in Mundus Javalis, 1614, that he, not Galileo, was the one who originally discovered Jupiter's moons. Marius was openly criticized for plagiarism throughout his tenure. Galileo was quite well known and influential in the Renaissance court and had already published his findings in 1610. While using a telescope to examine the moon in its many phases in the autumn of 1609, Galileo created this incredibly well-known sequence of six paintings of the moon. They serve as history's first realistic representation of the moon. He found the telescope in the following manner. He immediately discovered the inventor's secret through trial and error and created his version of a three-powered spyglass using lenses available for purchase in eyeglass shops. Everyone else tried it, 
But Galileo stood out because he learned the craft of lens grinding on his own, quickly figured out how to improve the telescope, and built progressively stronger telescopes. He gave an eight-power device to the Venetian Senate in August of that year. He received a lifetime appointment and a pay increase. Galileo was once among the university's highest-paid professors. In the fall of 1610, Galileo was awarded with a position as the Grand Duke of Tuscany's philosopher and mathematician. He triumphantly returned to his native country. Now a courtier, Galileo led a gentleman's lifestyle. Before leaving Padua, he had found Saturn's perplexing luck, which was subsequently revealed to be generated by a ring surrounding it. In Florence, he also learned that Venus experienced in spaces exactly like the Moon. These discoveries challenged Aristotelian cosmology, even though they didn't confirm that Earth is indeed a planet revolving around the Sun. The moons of Jupiter demonstrated that there must be more than one center of the movement in the universe, and Venus's faces demonstrated that it, and by extension Mercury, orbits the Sun. The moons of Jupiter also demonstrated that there must be more than one center of motion in the universe. As a result, Galileo's long-held beliefs that the Sun is at the center of the galaxy and that Earth, as Copernicus proposed, is a planet were confirmed. These beliefs, however, had not been the focus of Galileo's research. After a brief disagreement regarding floatable objects, Galileo returned to discussing the heavens and engaged in a discussion about the source of sunspots with German Jesuit and Ingolstadt mathematics professor Christoph Scheiner, 1573 to 1650. In an effort to preserve the sun's perfection, Galileo asserted that the sunspots were on and near the sun's surface, refuting Scheiner's claim that there were satellites of the sun. He supported this claim with a number of meticulous illustrations of his observations. Galileo's discoveries of the moon, Venus's phases, the moon's orbiting Jupiter, sunspots, and the discovery that the Milky Way galaxy is made up of what appears to be an infinite number of individual stars helped give rise to modern astronomy. Galileo would undoubtedly be in awe of NASA's exploration of the universe and beyond if he were alive today. Galileo found that the moon includes hills, pits, and other features exactly like the Earth. At the time, the majority of scientists thought that the moon was a perfect sphere. Galileo traveled to Rome to fight the Copernican causes in his good character after many Dominican fathers from Florence complained about him there. Before departing, he completed an enlarged letter to Castelli that was now directed to the Dowager Christina, the Grand Duke's mother and a close friend of Galileo's. Galileo tackled the issue of understanding biblical passages in his message to the Grand Duchess Christina, but except for one example, he didn't truly interpret the Bible. He also distinguished between basic and secondary qualities or the characteristics of external things and the feelings they arouse in us. When Maffeo Cardinal Barberini, 1568-1654, a patron, friend, and supporter of Galileo for 10 years was named Pope Urban VIII, even as the book was going to press, it was fortunate that Two Segatori was published at that time. It was promptly presented to the new pope by Galileo's friends. Galileo visited Rome in 1624 and spoke with Urban VIII six times. Galileo explained to the Pope his earlier developed theory of the tides, which he presented as evidence for the yearly and eternal motions of the Earth. Galileo made an astounding discovery when he focused his telescope on Jupiter, the biggest planet in the solar system. The planet was surrounded by four stars. Within a few days, Galileo discovered that these so-called stars were actually Jupiter's moons in orbit. A space mission named after Galileo Galilei was launched in 1989 to honor him and travel to Jupiter. The Galileo spaceship and its removable mini-probe traveled for 14 years, stopping at Venus, Earth, the asteroid Gaspra, Jupiter, Europa, Callisto, Io, and Amalthea. They also witnessed the collision of comet shoemaker Levy 9 with Jupiter. Galileo focused his attention on Venus, which, except for the sun and moon, is the brightest heavenly body in the sky. Thanks to his studies on the planet's faces, Galileo discovered that Venus circled the sun, not the Earth as was widely believed at the time. Galileo utilized his telescope to conduct research into the sun out of curiosity. Galileo aimed his telescope at the sun without realizing that gazing at our own star might harm his vision. He learned that the sun features dark colored spots known as sunspots. The assumption that the sun, not the Earth, was the center of the universe at the time was backed by Galileo's discoveries regarding the moon, Jupiter's moons, Venus, and sunspots.